the second scripture reading, we turn to Genesis, the twelfth chapter, the first nine verses. Listen for God's word to God's people. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the ones who curse you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother's son Lot and all the possessions that they had gathered and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Moreh. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country at the east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward the Negev. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, once again we come and stand before your open word, seeking your word for our life together. Speak, for we listen. Amen. Abram is called to go on a journey. Now, Abram is not called to go on a journey the way I tend to like to go on a journey. I have to admit, I like to think of myself as somewhat of a free spirit. I can go and explore and not be worried, and Mary Ann's giving me the look that says, uh-huh, I lived with you overseas for two years. That's not true. I don't like not knowing where we're going to sleep that night. That stresses me out. The idea, oh, we'll just show up in the village. There'll be room at the inn. And I'm always worried that there won't be room at the inn. And so to imagine going on a journey where not only is the eventual destination unknown, God just says, go from your country to the land I will show you. Not I have shown you. Not the land to whence I have given you a map quest. No, go to the land that I will show you along the way. And I'm not even going to give you necessarily the next step. Just go. Just go. The, the very last line of this I realize that the second half of this reading is a lot of, and then he went to this place and this place, and they took the people, and they, you know, a lot of the travel log of scripture. But I wanted to include that because of the last sentence. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward the neck. That step at a time journey, that next stage, and we just see that next little bit. And at one point, did you catch this in the middle? They set forth to go to the land of, the Can of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, God goes, and this is the land I'm going to give. Your ancestors keep going. Right? <laughs> you don't get to stay here. This is a destination for some people, eventually. Now keep going. I'll show you the way. Maybe I find that anxiety producing because it feels like some journeys that I have been on or journeys that I know people who are on. The journey of a career. 
where you think, I know where I'm going to go. Nope. <laughs> Keep going. I'll show you the way. Or the journey of being a parent. Where you think you know maybe what the next hour will bring. <laughs> the next day, eh. Five years from now, who knows? I know there are people in this room who are caring for a family member, a parent, or a sibling, where the relationship that you once knew has changed. And each day of the journey is a new stage. And you're journeying on by stages and you don't necessarily see the next one. You started a new job or a new school, or you decided to toss your lot in with this marvelous band of people called Trinity. And we're doing life together, journeying by stages. Each one trusting that God is pointing the way for us, but not knowing where two or three steps down the road might lead. Yet, we hear so Abram went as the Lord had told him. Bold. Now if we keep reading in the story, some of you will know, Abram's not always so trusting. Gets himself and his family, all of Egypt, into a little bit of trouble. But, at least in this moment, in this stage, Abram is trusting. Maybe it's because God has promised to bless Abram. Maybe if God spoke to me and said, I'll bless you and make your name great. Okay, I'm listening. That sounds nice. I'll bless those who bless you. Excellent. I will curse those who curse you. Ooh, even better. <laughs> but I think we often get hung up on that idea of us getting blessed. There's a whole strain of preaching that's all about do the right thing. God's going to bless you. God's going to make sure you don't lack for anything. That's not what God says to Abram. <laughs> God says you are going to be blessed so that you will be a blessing. We are not blessed for our own gain. We are not blessed to make our lives comfortable. We, like Abram, are blessed to be a blessing. That is the purpose of God's blessing and joy in our life, so that we are given something that we can then turn and give to others. And then there's an even harder part. I don't know that I want to admit this here. That whole cursing those who curse us thing that sometimes sounds really nice, especially, you know, the person that cuts you off in traffic. You can see their face and you're going, hmm, God, deal with that. Right? God says, after assuring us that those who curse us will be cursed, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. All the families. There's not an asterisk on this provision of God's blessing. God does not say all the families except those who irritate you. God does not say all the families except those who don't think about me the way you think about me. God does not say all the families of the earth except those who don't have enough money or don't have the right skin color or love the way we think they should love. No. God says that all families on earth will be blessed. Even those who curse you will eventually be blessed. When we journey by stages, we don't see the full picture. And we're not always meant to. We are simply called to take the blessings we've been given Receive them with open hands and hand them back out in a blessing to the world, knowing that as we hand them out, more will come. 
God is never short of blessing. Today, we are going to do an important thing that we do every year. We are going to dedicate ourselves to the service of the kingdom for the coming year. In some churches, there is a big focus on the monetary side of this. And I'm not going to lie to you, that's important. The money we bring in does amazing and valuable things. Because of your generosity and finances, we're able to make Trinity House a reality. We're able to provide a home for a guy who so desperately needs one. Because of your final financial generosity, we're able to do important mission work locally and nationally and internationally. We're able to do all the things we do as a church. But more important than that is our dedication as individuals to do the work, to care for one another. Maybe for you, it's singing in the choir. Thank goodness you sing in the choir. You're so good. Maybe for you, it's making sure we have cookies before and after worship. We love that too. Maybe for you, it is saying, guess what? I will go help visit people who can't make it to church very often. Or I'll call them and make sure they're okay. Or I'll be on one of our teams that when someone has had a crisis in their family, we're going to make sure they have more casseroles than they know what to do with. Not too many more, because that gets awkward, but you know, enough. There are so many ways that we do the work of the kingdom that may seem little and inconsequential. But each of them is a stage. Each of them is a step. Each of them is us following God's call for each person to be a blessing. And so here in a minute, after we say a prayer, I'm going to give you some instructions on what we're going to do. But before we get to the logistics of it, I want us to take some time in prayer to consider what God is calling each of us to do. And then in a moment, we'll hand it over and entrust that to God. Because none of us on our own can steer and power this ship. It's done through God's grace. 